Oh my God, look at that. There's so many of them. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Gosh, the mirrors, there's so many mirrors. Oh, this is so cool. So sable fish um, are also called black cod and they are a species that um, is raised in aquaculture facilities in Canada. One of the reasons that we were interested in exploring a carbonate site was the potential for fish habitats. It's so awesome, it's just so unusual for what our dives often look like like to be in a whole cloud of fish. I love this. I also love this for all our viewers that are usually like, where are the fish? You're like, they're here. <laughs> they're at Carbony Ridge. <laughs> where they're waiting. Wow. Oh, hey. Hey. oh, oh is that hydrate? Oh. Yes. That's hydrate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? That's Good you. Job, See, the fish just led us here. Oh, never yeah. Oh, that's perfect. We will never diss you again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we have the two layers, the layer yeah. further down. That's Over also sand of so. the bubble stream. And the bubble stream. That's perfect. They're sable fish scientists. Yeah. Wow. We're trying uh, to point our way. That is, that's yeah. the biggest, most obvious yeah. piece of hydrate yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> this is just crazy. All these, the seafloor is practically pink with sea stars. It's like the crab's giving him a hug. I yeah. Know. yeah. In there. In there. I'm sure the crab's like, if I pull this off, Tanner I'm eating crab. like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> the link cut is like, uh, I don't care. Now we're up on what you can think about, like the bathtub edge, the ring around, and we're starting to see those. Okay. Um, those are sea pens. So those red stalks are, have an animal burrowing. Go down to the silver tape. Keep going. So we have a variety of different kinds of push cores. Most of them are quote unquote regular. They are just with different uh, handles and some are different heights. The three on the front that have the large, almost pinkish tubing flying off on them, those are injector cores. So those we want to place into the seafloor get them back in the quiver, and then we uh, squeeze the injector. What is it measuring? Acceleration, Acceleration in three directions. Is that for uh, seismic? Seismic and in the fact that its shape, uh, it gets tilt because gravitation is acceleration as well. And that's our beacon, correct? That's our, yeah, our yes. USPL beacon that we use to monitor where Wally landed. And we can now reuse that when it comes back up to the surface. Mm -hmm. This one's rated to a thousand meters. We might be able to see some lights turning on on Wally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Wally. Hey. Lights on. Hi, Wally. So does Wally move pretty fast, or is this kind of maximum speed? Let's Wally move slow. Okay. Wally move slow. <laughs> Ooh, look, there's an octopus. Awesome. Doing a little posturing for us. Brave little thing. You have a neat ray or something in the coming in the screen. Yeah, nice, nice looking skate there. And if those lasers are ten centimeters apart, this is a pretty good size. They are indeed ten centimeters apart. Staring right at us. Trying to figure out the lights and the vibration. What's going on? Oh, oh, oh. oh. That's no telemetry. All right, kill it up on the winch. Up on the winch. Uh, up on the winch. I'm gonna back down. Innovator hold, please. Innovator hold. It's, uh, it's been a long week. Um, so last Thursday, uh, we actually lost connection with our ROVs from the ship. So uh, we had the the connection that is our the cable that uh, connects Argus to to the ship actually become severed. Uh, we think that that happened at the termination, so where the cable connects to Argus. And luckily, uh, one of the UNOLS vessels um, out of the University of Washington, the RV uh, Thomas G. Thompson, was just 11 hours south of us at Axial Seamount, wrapping up an expedition with the Ocean Observatories Initiative. The Jason team uh, really skillfully uh, strapped uh, up that daisy chain and then cut it. So all those lines are secure, so they're free of any entanglement in Jason's thrusters while we do this work sub C. Um, and what we're doing right now, we're getting ready to go in, or 
the ROV chasing team is getting ready to go in uh, with a hydraulic bandsaw to, to sever the tether. All stations, Hercules is free. Evie Nautilus, you got an ROV coming your way. The most important thing to say is that, you know, this is definitely an exercise of teamwork um, and the, one of the biggest things that has come out of this is just how collaborative and supportive uh, the oceanographic community is. You know, we've been hearing from all, uh, you know, people that we know, people we don't know, uh, that really just offering support and help and uh, that part of it has just been like one of the most incredible, incredible experiences of this kind of bad situation, but it's been kind of turned it into a very heartwarming and really uh, certainly memorable <laughs> experience. So we moved all of our equipment onto the Nautilus, integrated our systems in with their systems, and we've been working with the vehicle Nereid Under Ice to explore the area. And uh, we started off going down to the seafloor and communicating with our vehicle through optical modems. This is something new and exciting, and what we did there was we deployed our vehicle with an optical modem, and then we deployed Argus with a topside optical modem to talk to Nui underwater. Well, we just uh, reached another milestone in the, in the development of advanced autonomous vehicle systems. That uh, autonomous vehicle it has a fiber that's connected to us, but the fiber is 14 kilometers long, it just pays out, so it's, we do have a connection. But then we've transferred control of the manipulator uh, that you see functioning right now to people in Woods Hole, with other people connected in Chicago that are orchestrating a sampling routine with none of us operating it. So the, this is now being completely operated by people off the ship. And this is a portent of when we're not even on the ship. So we're moving faster than I thought we were gonna move. But this has been quite a new milestone in our undersea exploration. Imagine if three quarters of the animals in your backyard uh, were like fireflies. What, what, what would walking around your backyard be like? It would be fantastic. Well, that's the Midwater Ocean. Mezabot is helping us figure out who those animals are, where they're going, how they relate to each other, how they respond to the environmental conditions. So it's helping us put the pieces together. We want the robot to emulate the animals. So we know that the animals, they swim up and down following the light levels. And so we're trying to teach Mezabot the same trick. Well, what's really exciting about a new toy in our toolbox is Mesobot because it's able to explore the largest living space on Earth, which is the midwater zone, and of all places on the planet, the least explored and guaranteed discoveries. Let's join Nautilus Mapping Coordinator Aaron Heffron to walk us through a deep dive of what the mapping data has revealed so far. About 12 days ago, we left Oahu. Um, to what we have here um, and it started mapping when we got outside of Kauai and then finally um, three or so days after we left Oahu we made it to our, our first major seamount and so this is the King George seamount so this is what it looked like before um, again just from satellite altimetry based data so that was King George prior to our mapping efforts and then King George after, turn off the background data, we can see that it was indeed a, a flat top ski oat. And moving on from King George, so Loudon was a pair of seamounts, really close together with this kind of connecting saddle between them. And so I guess uh, what's important about mapping is that this, it becomes important when we want to explore these seamounts with our ROVs. We need to have a, 
a kind of better idea of what we're going to be putting the ROVs down on um, uh, with with more detail than what's available through the, the satellite altimetry estimates. Look at the size of this thing. This is prompting a holy guacamole. Uh, it's definitely a double guacamole. Yeah, nice big sponges. Yeah, look at that sponge. Wow, look at that. That is beautiful. See if we can find that little squat lobster on the right side of the stock. See if we can say oh, hi there to him. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, there he is. And that's a little muni dopsis, I think. Mm -hmm. Got one on this yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, amazing. Still not uh, sure on the uh, genus, but definitely a primnoid. So, and the leggy white ones are also a primnoid, but different species. That's a wow. That's a still shot there. You're grabbing away wow, there. Wow, yeah. uh, he's keeping up. Oh, can we zoom in on this feature right here? Yeah, sure thing. It's like a fossilized whale bone. Really? Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Pull this footage. <laughs> this is zero viz. It's the best stuff we've seen all night. <laughs> I think this is a, this is an assault. <laughs> their frowns. Oh, let me see. They look can like I, they are having zoom? the zoom worst day. La uh, can we get lasers off? <laughs> Oh, he's super <laughs> frowny. Oh. But they have knees. That's my favorite thing about them. They have knees? They have knees. They crouch. They're adorable. Oh, so <laughs> cute. I love you, little fish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a beauty. So I would say that's definitely a meter diameter at least, oh, right? At least, yeah. yeah. Probably two. You think two? I think so. Oh, there's, oh, there's little, little things oh. living in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. Now, did they enter the back side or they trapped in there since they were larvae? As they can. Beautiful sponge. There's also some number of unbranched bamboo corals. Um, I've seen some black corals as well. Bathypathies is here. Uh, zoanthids are quite common. Actually, you can see a couple different types of zoanthids. This mustard brown zoanthid. Um, and then on the nine o'clock position, we have these primnoid colonies covered with zoanthids, different species of zoanthid as well. Those look to be growing over in colonies of Norella. Seems like a really popular spot. Yeah. What are you? Oops. Hi, mm -hmm. I'm here. It's a cucumber. Oh. Zucchini. They're pretty. Yeah, it's nice looking. Look pretty. at his little spike back thing. Pretty color. No, isn't that fun? I like how they pop in every now and again on this watch. It's a nice little <laughs> burst of color. Oh, yeah. Um, you can actually see these in quite high densities on wrecks, oftentimes. So off the south shore of Oahu, uh, there are quite a few shipwrecks, and we've seen Thirteen These legs. These sea stars uh, all over them. That sponge looked like a hyalo nematid. Mm. Yes. I like its little legs going like <laughs> this. Yeah. I've never seen this before. Not looks one, like uh, not the anything that big. Like the car wash. Like the oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normally they're little tiny things. Yeah. Pollen, polynoid, polychaete, scale worm. Oh. 